On this video, we learn insights from a public relations specialist. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Trust Visuals. I'm an Austin videographer. I shoot a lot of personal branding videos for consultants, so I have learned by osmosis some of their marketing tactics. And I also know a lot of video and video marketing. So this channel is all about that so you can grow your personal brand and you can also learn tools and tips on how to approach your consulting business. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on a video. On this episode, I interview my friend Clarissa Ramirez. She's the owner of Small Coffee, a boutique PR and marketing firm here in Austin. She is incredibly talented. She has been invited by numerous business organizations locally here in Austin to give presentation of how business owners can do their PR and marketing. And PR is something that you're going to have to learn to do with your own video marketing. If you're doing your own videos, you can collaborate and network with other people around you so it can help increase the awareness of your brand. So this interview that I have with her, we cover a lot of things, habits, productivity tools, networking, all the things that have helped uh, manage her career. And hopefully it will be useful to you so you can manage your own personal branding. The things that she does with her own career are things that you can apply for your own growth on your personal branding, your video marketing and all that jazz. So without further ado, here's the video with my interview with Clarissa Ramirez. My name is Clarissa Ramirez. Um, I come from a multimedia journalism background and what I do now is content marketing, social media, and publicity for small businesses. You know, a big one was actually confidence. Um, when I graduated from undergrad, probably like a lot of people, I was, you know, it was intimidating starting off anywhere actually and trying to find my footing and see see where I belong so you know I thought I had to do so many things to kind of get to those steps um, but I realized that deep down I just all I needed to do was just kind of believe that I could do it mm. <laughs> and once I had that belief set in myself and knew that other people like a lot of friends were very supportive and said you can actually do this you know you have a master's degree you served in the Peace Corps um, just do it and just to kind of jump, I guess, jump out of that safety net and say like, let me start my own business. It really was just confidence. It was also looking at other people that were more confident than me, maybe that were younger or less experienced and seeing that they were able to execute a business. And I thought, man, if they're doing it, I could probably do it. So, um, you know, and I don't know what that magic switch is for a lot of people, um, but for me it was, I know it's very cliche to say, but it was kind of like fake it until you make it. I had to just believe that I could do it and act as if I could do it and then I was able to do it, um, if that makes sense. I, th I have to say, you know, maybe the other piece of advice that somebody gave me was don't overthink things. Um, and I think that before I start my business, I was thinking of, you know, I had a lot of fears and how am I going to get there from point A to point B? But when I was listening to interviews or when I talked to some mentors, they said, you just have to go into it and not look back. You know, you just have to go head first, dive into something. And then if the more you think about it, the more it's not going to happen. So that was really a key takeaway for me. First and foremost, communication. Um, I, that's the greatest value one of my greatest values, and I know a lot of people value that too, but um, it's just very ingrained with me that I want my clients to feel taken care of, and the reason that they stay with me is uh, because I'm communicative, and I'm always very transparent, I'm very honest um, of what's happening, and so it comes from a lot of sincerity. You know, I want to work with people that have that same value, and so if that means that I need to text someone or call someone or email them like immediately, um, 
and just kind of stop what I'm doing, I will because that is a great value for me and for my clients. And so I just kind of always make the habit of leaving little reminders to give people updates, let them know where we stand, um, give them reports, you know, instead of just kind of having them assume what, what I'm doing for them. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's just pretty much the biggest thing is I feel like I'm in front of my email all the time. Um, you know, making phone calls. I'm, I'm a professional communicator, really. So. Mm -hmm. so I live and die by my Google Calendar. Um, I have to have everything scheduled in it with reminders. I mean, it's hard to keep track of everything. Old-fashioned to-do lists are great, too. Um, now that we're so plugged into our phone, there's like a million different apps, luckily, and um, a lot of different digital tools. But what I've, a mentor told me that was the greatest takeaway was if it's taking you too long to do something, then outsource it. And that was a little scary at first because if, you know, I was like, how am I going to afford this? Um, but with design, I've been able to outsource that with a wonderful designer that I've met, writing projects as well. Um, now I have a new acquaintance who does events and so that's great. Like if I have a client that wants to do a big event, she can do that. And so I subcontract all of these people. Um, under my umbrella and they helped me get things done. Um, I took on my first paid intern this summer and that was, it's been a really awesome experience because she's been able to do a lot of the tedious tasks that I've maybe put aside or don't have time to do. Um, and she's great and she's very detail oriented. So she's helped me with a lot of research, which is awesome. Um, and I just feel like we're moving along a lot faster. So it's definitely worth Th that expense, um, I just have to kind of budget my time and my my money to see you know what I can what I can do with. I can't just outsource everything, of course. But um, as much as I, you know, obviously having a designer do it in two hours is better than me struggling for five hours to to make a flyer. So I'm a pretty social person, but I. Uh, have selectively chosen groups that I wanted to be a part of to meet people that were active and engaged in the community. And for me, that's more important than maybe just going to like a happy hour with a mixer because you know you can meet anyone that way. Um, and what I mean by that is you're not really doing anything, you're meeting people, but like, what are you, and that's actually how we met, which is great. Um, but ultimately, one of my values is community and what people can do. So. Volunteering with nonprofits, being a part of, of their committees, being a part of their board. Um, I want to meet other people that are engaged and that are leaders and that want to do more and give back. That's the kind of energy that I'm drawn to. And I think ultimately, while professional groups are great to be a part of, you know, I, I want to meet diverse people that are outside of my network. That way, you know, ultimately that will help me bring new business. But at the end of the day, I could meet you know, meet some people to collaborate with or that could refer me to other businesses, um, but also be helping like the greater good. So one of the groups I'm a part of, um, it's the Girls Empowerment Network, and I chair one of their, their groups, and we have about 60 members in it, and you know, everybody comes from a diverse background, and it's not just about like, oh, where can I find other marketers or other publicists or, you know, journalists that I can pitch to. I'll meet those people through organically, um, just through doing business. But it's the people that are in this type of network that are more interesting to me because um, they teach me something outside of the world that I'm currently, you know, working in. <laughs> so that being said, you know, what, I love connecting people. I feel like I've always been a big connector um, and it's a value to a lot of people I work with because maybe they need a photographer or they need um, somebody, you know, uh, a, that can paint their building or something. And so who th so if I can give them those, re provide them with resources, then I'm more of a value. I offer a greater value to them. So, um, and I... I guess I just do that by trying to meet as many people as possible and just, you know, um, making time for that. So I'm not super organized in terms of where, you know, I'm going to dedicate two days a week to go to a networking event. I just kind of have regular things that are on my radar that um, are interesting to me. And, um, you know, I mentioned a little bit earlier Leadership Austin, but I've met a lot of great leaders that are through that and they're 
involved in a lot of different projects um, and that's been really awesome to be a part of that network. One of the greatest lessons I learned while I was in the Peace Corps was if you wanted to get something done, it really depended on a few factors. And one was empowering someone to help you do it, um, to believe in what you were doing, and that it would actually, like, by taking a risk, for example, on uh, maybe doing an event would generate buzz or publicity. Like, those, those kind of ideas stem from a lot of the small business uh, marketing tactics I was using in my village where it was like you have to get people invested into a project but you can't get them invested into a project if they don't show up and so you know one of the ways that I would do that and other fellow volunteers in the Peace Corps would do that was by having these things called cafecitos and that is um, meeting people for coffee and bringing biscuits and and just sort of chatting and people love having cafecitos like it's just it's interesting because it's free I mean it was free but it was very social and it was almost kind of like Austin has so many happy hours but it really drew people and I would make some of the best cookies and some of the best brownies and they knew that so it was very enticing to get people and once they were there and once they were you know buzzed <laughs> with with both the caffeine but also the energy of being in that group they got really excited and we were able to get the ball rolling and have momentum behind projects so i was very careful about wanting to pick a name that fit my brand um and it might sound silly and people kind of laugh at me when they're like small coffee where does that come from but it, it is the translation of what cafecito means it's a small coffee and um and the purpose was to try to generate buzz that came organically through the community. So using grassroots principles where it's maybe bringing interesting people together um, or just doing something that's creative, that's outside of the box, but that fits with your budget. And just starting small, and like letting that escalate until it gets bigger. So um, I don't know where my business is gonna be in five years. I have ideas, but I do know that I wanna keep that same principle of having Build, building a community by providing um, by providing the space and by just sort of providing these simple tools, whether it's, um, you know, making coffee and biscuits or <laughs> it's by bringing a great team together that can help you think about what that cup seed is going to be for you. So that's, um, that's what Small Coffee is all about. Well, that's it for my interview with Clarissa Ramirez. Go ahead and check the link below so you can follow her on her website, on her Instagram, and on her Facebook page. If uh, you want to keep learning uh, these tools about video marketing, personal branding, career tips, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out a thing. So, see you on the next episode.